next guy here and I want to provide some feedback and firmware as of 6 16 2020 and I posted an exhaustive field test video now I didn't within that field test video I didn't do the uh, the 8k mode that the 8k hyperlapse that the firmware has brought to the Mavic Air 2 but uh, did do a lot of other tests been getting a lot of comments just published that video what about an hour or so ago so if you haven't checked it out uh, check out my Mavic Air 2 with a uh, firmware version whatever it is I don't I don't have that version memorized but it's the it's the most current Mavic Air 2 firmware um, some of the high points were uh, I was able to wave at the drone when I went into quick shots I was able to wave at the drone instead of uh, instead of clicking go to make the quick shot start. So that was cool. Uh, Tell me without nice um, do the uh, quick shot modes in 4K, and I've got a separate tutorial coming out for that. So stay tuned for that video. And you know, again, thanks today, Tona, because the way the interface might lead a uh, a pilot astray is that you know you might think you click the camera icon and the settings for video that you click after clicking camera icon you know one might think that's uh the settings for quick shot and it's not the case there's a separate section for quick shot settings you basically hit those three dots in the top right and when you do that you're able to set the video mode for the uh for the quick shots so you know different place within the app not uh, too intuitive. I think that DJI team, you know, with being so so detail oriented, I think that's a user interface thing that they could fix. You know, maybe something as simple as, you know, when you click the camera icon, be like, oh, do you also want to set your video settings for quick shots? If so, click here and have it in the same section where you find your your standard video settings for flying without quick shot mode. That would be much more intuitive. And from a, from a developer's perspective, adding that little verbiage and a little shortcut there within the app, within the cam if you click camera icon, wouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's make it happen. So with that being said, you know, just doing the, doing the little uh, live walk around and welcome everyone. I see a bunch of people tuning in. I am gonna put it on the, uh, on the channel's calendar so obviously if you haven't subscribed be sure to do so uh, youtube.com forward slash irix guy and ring that bell and that'll keep you abreast of all the latest things so you know one of the things uh probably let's see what is today wednesday i'm targeting yeah tomorrow evening thursday evening so be on the lookout be doing a live show live Q&A show uh, from the studio and probably around eh, probably around 8 p.m. New York City time Thursday night tomorrow night so stay tuned you'll be able to see that pop up on my channel Adrian welcome welcome aboard Adrian Adrian's always here man that's great uh, always good to see you man uh, just hope all's well on your end man just uh, you know, testing the Mavic Air 2 as thoroughly as possible. Um, I've got about five. A, a, uh, I've been a subscriber of the channel for a very long time, and and you know that's awesome that that, that you've been a subscriber for so long because you know one, not a big number. There's a lot of much larger YouTube channels, but. 75,000 is somewhat close to 100,000 subscribers. So, you know, I really want to get, I want to push this channel to 100,000 subscribers and beyond ASAP because that's when I should get the trophy. You know, so that is when the trophy goes in the studio. I've already got a designated silver play button spot and I've already got a designated gold play button spot. But, you know, the first leg up is silver play button so as soon as i get that got a place on the studio wall dill h hello irix guy mavic air 2 versus the mavic 2 pro which one would you buy if you could only have one 
Mavic Air 2. Uh, reason being, and check out my tons of videos, and I've got a ton more coming soon. You know, I, I don't want to just say the Mavic Air 2 is better and not provide a thorough opinion. Uh, Mavic Air 2 is better than the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, the Mavic 2 Pro does win in one, win in one area, and that one area is the Mavic 2 Pro has a one-inch sensor camera. So, did I go a little bit dark here? Let's see. Let me check my checking my settings here. Sorry. Yeah. So the the Mavic uh, Mavic 2 Pro has a one-inch sensor camera. So, you know, with that, you're going to get better low-light performance. You're going to get uh, enhanced depth of field. You know, if you want to blur the background. You know, if you're if you're a professional photographer and you know you see professional uh, photography work and 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 that you know often backgrounds are blurred and uh let's see i'm going to flip this around here and see if this let's see there we go and you know backgrounds are blurred and that sort of stuff and oh there we go so you know having that one inch sensor camera on the mavic 2 pro is not only giving you better low light performance but it's opening up the uh the opportunity to defocus the background create that blurred background get some creative shots however if you're like me, and again, this all depends upon your use case for a drone. For me, I'm about landscapes. You know, for example, I go out, I swim to shore from a boat and, you know, got my drone in the dry bag and, and I take off from the beach and I swim back to the boat. I want the, I want the environment, you know, and I, I may not have a lot of batteries with, well, I'll have, I'll have multiple batteries, but I may not have a way to recharge those. And, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I get the best shots. And, and again, I'll go back to this. And this was with my Mavic 2 Pro. And to this day, it's irritated me. I was in, uh, I was out on the boat and I went to this island. I swam to shore with the Mavic 2 Pro in my dry bag. Took off. Awesome shot. Taken off from this island. I'm the only person on the island. And it's just perfect weather everything's fine i go back and i edit the video the first few seconds of the video were blurry they were out of focus and the rest of it was fine but just those few seconds been out of focus i lost what was video gold i mean taking off you know seeing that that island emerge beneath the drone it still irritates me now had i had mavic air 2 at the time since mavic air 2 does an exceptional, you know, no, no thought process required autofocus for video, Mavic Air 2 would have captured that shot in its full glory. Now, you know, daytime conditions, Mavic Air 2, boom, on point. Autofocus is, is on point. Don't have to deal with manual focus. Don't have to roll the dice, cross your fingers and toes and hope that autofocus is gonna work. Now, granted, Mavic 2 Pro, with more recent firmwares, the autofocus performance got better. But I was using a more recent firmware when I lost those few key seconds of footage. I didn't lose the footage, it was just poorly focused, which in essence, it made it unusable. So for that reason, if you're doing daytime fl flying and you care about consistently rock solid autofocus, Mavic Air 2 is the boss. Um, now, if you're doing lower light, again, or if you want to get really cool, shallow depth of field, defocus background, bokeh, insert whatever buzzword there, then Mavic 2 Pro with the one-inch sensor is going to win. Overall, the Mavic Air 2 is a little bit smaller. The Mavic Air 2, and obviously fly line of sight to be safe and responsible, but the Mavic Air 2 has better range. The Mavic Air 2 has better battery life. And the Mavic Air 2 and prices are subject to change. Check the link within this video's description to find the Mavic Air 2, Mavic 2 Pro, all the accessories as well. But, you know, it's uh, it's just a better deal. And, and let's put it this way. Let's say hypothetically, Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic Air 2, let's say hypothetically, and they're not, but let's say they were the same price. What would I pick? Which drone would I choose? If they were the same price, I would get the Mavic Air 2. 
So that's how much I like the Mavic Air 2 in comparison to Mavic 2 Pro. Now what I want, and this is gonna be Mavic 3 probably, is I want a modular camera option. I want a drone that, uh, you know, gives me the ability to, okay, put a zoom camera on without tools. You know, tool is pop on, pop off. Okay, put a, you know, one inch sensor or greater camera on. Okay, I can do that without tools. Put on a 360 spherical camera, VR camera. Okay, I can do that without tools. Put on an infrared camera, which for me, I'm probably not gonna use infrared much, but it'd still be cool. Have that option, you know? I mean, right now, today's market, what is today, June the 7th? You know, I use quotes to say professional, but typically for a professional drone, you know, the, so I've been eating blackberries. I just went out to a blackberry bush and just started eating them. I got blackberry seeds all in my teeth. Um, so and if you want professional, you're probably gonna have to go one inch sensor or larger. But keep in mind, and look at the analytics, if you're using a drone for, say, social media purposes, and let's say the bulk of your viewers, the bulk of your audience is using a mobile device, well, maybe only a small percentage are using smart TVs. So if they're using a small screen, you know, the, the perception may be that, you know, even if you filmed it with a, with a Mavic Air 2, or a Mavic Mini, the perception may be that it's a professional video. It's not until you go large, large 4K or greater monitor, large 4K or better smart TV, that you notice the obvious differences in video quality among Mavic Mini, Mavic Air 2, and Mavic 2 Pro. So, you know, it's a matter of your use case. And for me, you know, I don't have to be, well, I wanna be as professional as possible, but for my use case, you know, being the guy that goes out in the field and reviews drones and takes drones everywhere and tries to film cool stuff, you know, I want something that's capable. I want something that's reliable. I want something that's good video quality, 4K or better. On today's market you know once if 8k check catches on then i'll be going to 8k here comes an airplane Whee! um but you know i mean uh today mavic air 2 is the boss man and it's not just because it's the newest it's because of what i just said and and again all of this is open uh you know, everybody's got different opinions, but you know, I think if you haven't picked up Mavic Air 2 yet, you know, definitely do it. I mean, if you've got the budget and you want what I feel is the best drone to market today, pick it up. You know, and you can expand this video's description and click the link there to find the Mavic Air 2 and all the other drones. But if you've already got a Mavic 2 Pro, do you need to upgrade? Probably not. I think if you've already got a Mavic 2 Pro, I would hold out for the uh for the mavic 3 um but if you don't have either yes i would definitely choose mavic air 2 over the mavic 2 pro now let me tell you this and i'm going to be posting another video editing another video in the studio here shortly low light performance of mavic air 2. you know one might assume including myself that low light performance is pitiful because it's got a small sensor it's not a one inch sensor on the camera. Check out my low light videos during sunset and tell me what you think. Those are Mavic Air 2 videos. So, you know, granted from my perspective, being in the studio with the high res monitors, pixel picking, pixel peeping rather, I can tell the difference between low light video, Mavic Air 2, low light video, Mavic 2 Pro. But for you, the viewer, even if you're, you know, very familiar with drones and video, it may be harder for you to decipher between the two. Especially if you're not into drones, you're not into cameras, you're just some, 
insert whatever here that's not technologically minded, you may just be scrolling through your social media feed and watch a video and wouldn't even notice a difference between, or among rather, Mavic Mini, Mavic 2 Pro, and Mavic Air 2. So there's so many, I mean, these are subtle differences, man. And just to, just to let you in on the pixel peeping comment, if, if I, when I'm editing video and it's dark, sunset, you know, you see black sky and then you see the colorful sky where the sun's setting. When you look at that black sky on Mavic 2 Pro, it's going to be a solid black. Hey, brother, Iris guy, I got a serious question for you. Adrian, shoot away, man. That's what this live show is for. And then when you look at Mavic Air 2, the black sky, if you're pixel peeping, you're going to probably notice the grain in the black. It's not going to be a true solid black. You know, that's your... And then you compare that to not a drone camera, uh, like something high end, like a Sony Alpha mirrorless, then you're really going to see true black. Let's see, I'm reading... Adrian says, I've been hearing a lot of noise about the new firmware for the DJI Mavic Air 2. Is this firmware update worth it? Adrian, full disclosure, as always on this channel, you know, I keep everything... Uh, because I've been hearing a lot of crap and it's not good at all. I can speak for what I've experienced with the latest DJI Mavic Air 2 firmware so far. I can tell you that so far, and again, I've only flown it for one day. So watch my video. I th actually, I think you already did. The, the Mavic Air 2 uh, firmware version, whatever it is, the 0 0.01. blah, 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 blah. Watch that. And that's how it performed for me. So let me ask you this, and thanks for the question. Is there something, if you want to comment, probably the best thing to do is comment uh, within that video's comments and just point out, if you want to, some of the less than desirable uh, comments that you've heard about the latest DJI Mavic Air 2 firmware, because I'm looking to test. So, you know, if you've got some stuff you know, that you want to share in the comments of that video, by all means, do it. And then what I'll do is add that to my to-do list for videos. So the next time I'm in the field, you know, maybe I can test that, some or all of that, and and show you what happens for me. And I mean, you know, maybe it'll fail. Uh, maybe it's just people, you know, there's, I, I don't, I would love to acknowledge negative feedback because it suggests that there's a possibility that something may not work as expected. But the flip side of negative feedback is that often it's created to, to give a product a bad name. So if there's, if, there's, if there's less than positive feedback, definitely I wanna be all over it. And if it fails or it succeeds, I'm gonna share it. You know, I'm, I'm not here to sugarcoat reality. So you know, whatever happens when I'm able to test these scenarios, everybody sees it, including, you know, the manufacturer. If DJI is watching my videos, which I hope they do, if they see it, if there's a problem and I'm able to, to reproduce a problem, it's great if they see it. Um, so yeah, shoot, uh, shoot those comments over below the DJI Mavic Air 2 with the most recent firmware video and you know, I'm going to try to add that to my in the field to do list because I'm trying to find flaws, man. And the only thing I found so far, and it's not a flaw, but it's just a, it's an opportunity for DJI to enhance the user interface is initially, you know, I was unable to get, I was unable to achieve 4k video in quick shot mode, but thanks to Daytona and, and several other viewers pointing me to the triple dots. You got to go to the triple dots, man. And that's where you adjust the video settings for quick shots. If you try to adjust the quick shot video settings within the, the camera icon, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to update your video settings for your, for your normal flying if you're not in quick shot mode. So that's an opportunity for improvement. Uh, what I can say, you know, on top of the video that I posted, my first uh, field test video with the latest Mavic Air 2 firmware as of 6-17-2020 is uh, 
you know, the active track seemed to behave exceptionally well. The, uh, I don't know, it was, just, it was a good experience. But again, I wasn't aware of potential bugs. So, you know, post those comments because the next time I field test, maybe I can reproduce some of those uh, Mavic Air 2 firmware issues that have been uh, circulating the internet. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to do that, man. And that's exciting because, you know, if you share those, those potentially negative uh, situations and if others share it, then, you know, that's, that's stuff to, to go out in the field and test. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to, to, uh, to, what's the word for it? Be a fanboy of any brand or any product. You know, I'm not a fanboy. I'm just a guy that goes out in the field with a drone. I don't care what the brand is. I'm going to, I'm going to tear it apart from a review perspective. So yeah, man, great question. So what else? Uh, got a ton of people tuning in here. Oh, don't forget to super chat everyone. This is a live show and you can support my live shows just by clicking that super chat. And that's the little super chat icon in the comment section. And also Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Irix guy. Uh, you know, again, being an independent YouTube channel, my goal, not my goal, but my mission I'm hell bent upon exceeding 100,000 subscribers as soon as possible. And I'm hell bent upon getting the boat back out and getting back out in the, in the Caribbean Sea as soon as this stuff that's floating around in the air clears. <laughs> it's just not healthy to, to get out and travel right now, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, Mavic Air 2, man best uh i'm 100 confident best drone on the market today and uh it's funny we really haven't seen any competitors try to step up you know you would think that i think everybody's just so embarrassed that you know they just can't they can't create a drone that'll even capture any sort of excitement <laughs> only dj i can i mean and that's that's fine but I just hate being a one brand dude, you know. That's kind of like it's kind of like cars and trucks, you know. You get the same you get the same car every, you know, whenever you trade in or whatever and it gets kind of boring, you know. You want to mix it up. You want to go from you want to go from different brand to a different uh, type, you know, maybe you want an SUV, maybe you want a truck, maybe you want a car. Um, maybe you want a hybrid, maybe you want electric. Maybe you want petrol, gasoline. I mean, who knows? So, you know, I wish there were more choices when it came to drones. But, you know, with that being said, I mean, we've kind of got the, <laughs> the number one drone brand, that's DJI. Still irritates me, GoPro didn't really give it an honest attempt. It's like, oops, we got our drone recalled. Oops, we're gonna re-release it even though it was a failure, oops. Now we're just quitting drones. Granted though, I think GoPro is probably better off sticking to action cameras because that's what they do best. They really do. Hasselblad. 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 Don't hustle the blood. That's right, DJI acquired Hasselblad. Do you prefer shooting an HDR for video, high dynamic range? Yes. Um, actually, HDR, a Sager Arch, um, HDR is something, in the past, I didn't really notice the value of HDR. And for everyone out there that's not familiar with the term HDR, you may have seen that acronym on TVs, whatever. HDR is high dynamic range. And Actually, with Mavic Air 2 and my land-based cameras, I always use HDR. And where will you notice the advantage that HDR provides? So, for example, with Mavic Air 2, and currently with the firmware, you can't do HDR in 4K60. You can do HDR as high as 4K30. So, my preferred Mavic Air 2 setting, for that reason, is 4K30 HDR where you're gonna notice really good advantage of HDR video over non-HDR is if you're filming over water, especially if there's trees and shadows, 
um, you're really going to get, it's going to give it a more, I don't think vibrant would be the word, but just, just watch some of my videos and one I'm going to be posting uh, either tonight or in the morning with some sunset footage. You know, look at those, look at those shadows and look at the, look at the reflections and, and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, you're, when you're shooting an HDR, high dynamic range, if you know what to look for and see, yes, again, that's, you know, your casual viewer of, you know, just somebody mindlessly scrolling through a YouTube feed or a Facebook feed, you know, they may watch an HDR video and not necessarily realize that there's anything special about it. But someone that's a connoisseur of good looking video is probably immediately gonna notice that a video was filmed using HDR, high dynamic range, or HDR, HDR, HDR. So, yeah, I mean, there is a huge visual difference. Uh, Dale says, and you have convinced me to go ahead and get the Air 2. I know you have the links, but what's the benefit to ordering direct? Dude, here's the benefit. You pay the same price. If you go, if you click the expand this video's description and then click the link there, or if you just type into your web browser, epicdroneshow.com, and then once you're on epicdroneshow.com, that graphic that appears at the top says buy a drone, click that. Um, what it does, man, and again, you know, it's no cost to you, but being an independent YouTuber, if people choose, and again, it's a choice that you've got to make. But if you choose to go to epicdroneshow.com, if you choose to go to irixguy.com, and then you choose to click the links there, that helps me. Because you're being referred from my site, which means that you watch my channel. And, you know, that's just a way of, of saying, hey, man, you know, I, I like his videos. I want to support his channel. You know, it's of it's no cost to you. It's just, you know, you're... You're taking the step to you know expand my videos description and click the link there or you're just heading directly to epicdroneshow.com or irxguy.com and then clicking the links again no cost to you but i'm trying to think of a good way to explain it so you ever bought like a car or something and and uh and then and then like the salesperson's like hey man if you tell your buddies about these deals and and man you know, if you, if you send a buddy here and if they buy a car, blah, 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 you know, often car salespeople will do something like that. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a finder's fee, you know, think of it that way. You know, when you, when you choose to go to epicdroneshow.com or click the link within this video's description or go to irixguy.com and then shop after clicking the links there, it's kind of like saying, oh, hey, hey, y'all, Irix guy sent me to y'all. So then if you choose to make a purchase, well, you know, boom. Who sent the business their way? This guy did. So since this guy did, you know, it's not much. I mean, I get, I get a small, um, if purchases are made, I get a small referral fee. But, you know, again, being an independent YouTube channel, every penny counts. Not every dollar, but every penny. So, you know, that's why I'm always pushing not pushing, but encouraging. And sometimes it comes across as pushy because, you know, I'm not a marketing dude. I'm just a dude. Um, so maybe my marketing strategy is, is, uh, comes across as pushy. Who knows? But anyway, that's, that's it. So if you do shop my links, it's greatly appreciated. Again, it's of no cost to you. It's greatly appreciated if you do. And if you can't find something, just ask and I'll be happy, more than happy to try to find a product link for you. Mr. Sinister. I've heard with this firmware update that you hover in tripod mode and move left or right. Hover in tripod mode and move left or right. It's abnormally fast and jerky. I haven't tested it. Excellent. Mr. Snyder, if you don't mind, man, uh, my video that I posted of the firmware, if you have a second, post that comment in there because what I'm going to do is gather all the reports of Mavic Air 2 firmware issues, you know, issues with the latest Mavic 2 firmware. And that's one, uh, actually that comment and then whatever Adrian post, because there's, uh, 
you know, th those are things to test. It's easy for me to take that puppy out in the field, put it in tripod mode and see what happens. Awesome, man. And hey, anything else, you know, even if, even if it's a far-fetched rumor, you know, that sounds, that sounds like that could happen. But if it's something just ridiculous that you've heard about the Mavic Air 2 firmware, feel free to share that. I encourage everyone because, you know, it's, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, it's content, man. You know, I'm here to test this stuff, provide value, have fun. And, and it's, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm looking for video ideas. Dale says, do you fly any other model aircraft other than drones? Not currently. Um, I used to fly those Estes model rockets. And I, you didn't really fly them. You just put the motors in there. And I did multi-stage Estes rockets. I put a, back before drones existed, and I've got this video on YouTube, I attached a, uh, a keychain camera to the uh, Estes rocket, right? And it went up and it ejected the top and the parachute deployed and, and then this thing's hovering back down to earth. Grace JD, what's up? What is up? Our, what is up, Grace? Welcome to the race, Grace. I'm going for a jog. Welcome aboard. Actually, I'm not gonna jog or shake my camera. Did you buy a strobe yet? I have the strobe video suggestion in my to-do list, but I haven't bought a strobe yet. Grace says, what's going on, bro? I've been following you for years. Well, I'm just going for a walk, trying to burn off some of this chub, because I got, uh, you know, with this quarantine, I've gotten, uh, I've always been kind of fat, except when I worked out excessively and got ripped. Um, but because of the quarantine, you know, even though I'm trying to eat uh, somewhat healthy, you know, I've uh, I've kind of gotten fat, and and I and I'm I'm just walking to try to reduce the the waistline. You know, my my thing is this: I always like to stick at least two or three fingers down the side of my pants, and if I can do that, I've got room to grow. Now, if it starts to get tight, then I know I'm getting too fat and I've got to go on a binge diet. And you know, that's when I'll do the uh, tuna and water and just do that for a few weeks and drop like 30 pounds. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, once this COVID clears, be able to get back in the gym and do it like it's supposed to be done. Uh, let's see, Adrian says, hey brother, I wish you and your family have a great evening, Captain. I'll let you go, sir. God bless and stay safe. Adrian, always a pleasure, man. And thank you for your feedback. And, you know, anything that you want me to test with the firmware, just ask. Uh, let's see what we got here. And then says, are you walking in the field where you fly? No, I'm just walking around abandoned parking lots. Um, Lino Pro says, I got worried there for a minute when you said stick two fingers. Well, it, you know, I get worried. Now, usually I'll do three fingers. Because that way, you know, I've got, I can tell my waistline, I've got room to grow. But if I get down to two fingers, then I know I'm starting to get too fat. And if I get down to one finger, it's a fat emergency. So it's a fat crisis. You know, that's when I start the tuna and water binge. You know, I cut out any soda. Um, you know, I drink a ton of water and I don't eat anything sugary. You know, I cut, reduce my fruit intake. So, you know, it's just, it's a... It's a balancing act. I mean, I know a lot of people that, uh, that take dieting too seriously. And, and often what happens is that when they diet, number one, they end up spending a lot of money. So, you know, that makes them unhappy. Number two, they don't enjoy the food because it's just, you know, it's health food. And who wants, oh, great question. Uh, who wants health food? So, you know, just do your workouts, do your cardio. Um, try to eat right, you know, don't, don't eat stuff with, don't drink stuff with added sugar. Um, try not to drink too much beer, you know, just drink some, you know, drink a little bit of hard liquor or something. I mean, who knows? I mean you know, it's dieting is fun. Let's get back to the drones here. We'll get back on the fat talk, talk on another show. Uh, Lino Pro says, what's your best drone ever? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, based upon overall fun, the best drone ever from a 
from an entertainment perspective was the Phantom One. And the reason being is that, see, I was hesitant to enter the drone hobby. I did not enter the drone hobby until Phantom Two was released because something brand new from a company I'd never heard of, DJI, had released something that flew and cost a lot of money. Channel. And, uh, you know, that being the case, I was a late adopter. But Phantom One was my all-time favorite drone just because it was proof of concept. Not only was it proof of concept, but it proved to me that, you know, my degree of confidence that the drone's probably not going to crash and that the drone's probably not going to fly away is pretty high. You know, I, I felt pretty good about DJI products. And then my understanding and comfort level with DJI products is their technology advanced, continued to get even better. So, you know, now, you know, I can, without crossing my fingers, I can count on DJI being a reliable drone. But that was the most exciting just because it was brand new. I'd never piloted anything like a drone before. And, you know, you never can, you never can trump the experience of a brand new technology. So, you know, yes, there are better and greater drones now, but, you know, trumping the fun factor of the first drone, that's impossible to trump. Uh, I got some more comments coming in here. Oh, and everybody don't get to super chat. Uh, Sager Art says, with the HDR and no control over shutter speed, have you had any issues with the footage being jittery? You know what's funny? I've had no jittery issues with the with the uh, HDR. Now, all of my flights, and I've flown quite a bit of Mavic Air 2 flights now. All of them have been, except for a few 4K60 tests, all of them have been 4K30 HDR, 4K30 high dynamic range. And I have not noticed any jittery video. I have not noticed any uh, unacceptable video quality. Uh, it's even handled, you know, despite the smaller sensor size, it's even handled the, uh, the low light situations like sunsets exceptionally well, you know, more than usably well. I mean, this is footage that even for a lot of my professional projects that I would use, it's great. No issues there, at least with mine, with my Mavic here too, at least. Grace says, enjoy your walk, brother. Will do, Grace. Thanks for tuning in as always. Evan says, for focus track. Have you tried the auto select with new firmware for focus track? Actually, I've got a video. I did active track now. Um, and you'll have to check it out. I haven't published it yet, but I performed that test in the field. And are you talking about the parallel and the, uh, let's see, what's the, there's two modes. There's parallel, and then there's the other, whatever the other one is, where you, where you paint your fingers and select the object. In this case, it was myself. Tell me if that's the test you're looking for. If not, I'll do another field test and address your, uh, your question. Mr. Sinister, do you think the smart controller is too much hype for the Mavic Air 2? I have no interest in it. Smart controller provided a nice advantage uh, for the uh, for the original Mavic 2 Pro controller, and you know one of the biggest advantages was it didn't have the wonky you know handles that you had to pop out and put your smartphone in. Even though those handles worked, you know I found that unless my iPhone had an ultra slim case that I had to take the phone out of the case. And that was problematic because now I've got a phone that's not protected. If I drop it while I'm flying the drone, I'm gonna damage my phone. The smart controller was nice because it integrated the screen. And also you didn't have to fly with your phone. You know, you could save your cell phone battery. So, you know, it provided value. Um, since the Mavic Air 2's come out, do I care about the smart controller? Not really. Because of the Mavic Air 2, I put whatever model iPhone on the top and it just works and I don't have to deal with those wonky hand grips or you know any of that stuff so it's it, it just works exceptionally well I'm not I mean not to say I wouldn't consider a future smart controller but I think it's overpriced for what it is and that screen is permanently mated to the device so you know unlike the Mavic Air 2's controller where you can upgrade your smartphone you can't just pop the screen off of the smart controller <laughs> 
So it's a, it's a heavy price tag, hefty price tag, and you're kind of married to that. Um, Ready Player One. Anyone know first true that Facebook don't support 4K video from your hard drive drone movies? It just seems max at 720p. Having the phone and antenna built in on the top is just a winning formula for my next Mavic. No doubt, man. And hey, when you pick up that next Mavic Air or Mavic Air 2, EpicDroneShow.com, man. Support my channel. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, it makes me wonder with this new controller design, you know, if DJI was smart, if they wanted to penetrate the, uh, the, you know, the smartphone and tablet sector, what they would do is they would release a Mavic 3 with a smart controller, but an upgraded smart controller that has a modular screen, meaning that you can pop your DJI screen out of the smart controller. It's not permanently affixed to the smart controller like the Mavic Air 2 smart controller screen is. So a modular screen so that, you know, you could buy this controller, you know, like an iPhone that upgrades every year or so. You could then buy the upgraded, not phone, but, you know, smart controller screen or whatever DJI wants to call it. So, you know, that's, uh, that's the direction I would take if I was, if I was with DJI. Now, DJI, if you're looking to hire someone, and again, my salary is negotiable, but I would consider anything uh, 160K uh, US dollars a year or more. If you're looking to hire someone to give you great ideas, I'm available. <laughs> so just let me know. But again, it's got to be 160K US salary or more per year. But yeah, I'm always willing to entertain any uh, opportunities that your team may be willing to throw my way because I love money. Uh, not money, but freedom. You know what I mean? So yeah, so. Uh, so yeah, I just, I don't see the need for the Mavic 2 Pro with smart controller. You know, I would, and it makes you wonder, are they gonna release a new controller for Mavic 2 that's like the Mavic Air 2's controller? Probably not, because they're probably just gonna bring us a totally new Mavic 3 or Mavic 3 Pro or whatever they wanna call it. So it's very interesting stuff, you know, this, there's one thing about this drone hobby. It never becomes boring. And, you know, with that being said, what I'm going to do and, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, youtube.com forward slash guy, because I'm going to do a little bit of jogging and then, uh, and then I'm going to send out a, uh, I'm going to publish the live show for Thursday evening. It's probably going to be around 8 p.m. New York City time, but you'll be able to find it. You can just go to, uh, actually, I'm going to do an Epic Drone Show instead of Irish Guys Live Show. So just go to EpicDroneShow.com. You'll see the post there probably within the next hour or two, and you can set a reminder. And then if you're able to tune in at, uh, at approximately 8 p.m. New York City time Thursday night, I'm going to be doing a uh, live Epic Drone Show from the studio. So could be really cool professional video, professional lighting, and obviously super chat, super chat, super chat. And y'all can super chat during these shows too. So, you know, don't forget that. Um, let's see. Mr. Sinister says, I'm hoping for an update with gimbal pitch speed and left to right smoothness. Aha, you know, that, that smoothness is crucial for cinematic videos. Very, very crucial. Uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, so Ready Player One, I think there is a limit on how existing and ergonomic you can make a controller. But we will see going forward. Also, you being in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who knows, man? Who knows? So, yeah, it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, and I think, you know, this, I think 2021 is going to be a huge year for the industry just because 2020 has been such a bummer. <laughs> I mean, any, anything that could mess up in 2020 is messed up. 
except for the Mavic Air 2. That's been a great positive aspect of 2020. Uh, has, has been and will continue to be a great positive aspect of 2020. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. So with that being said, y'all, we're, uh, we're about 47 minutes in. Again, just head on over to epicdroneshow.com and you'll see my post within, uh, within an hour or so. And that's going to be the live show Thursday night around 8 p.m. New York City time. So, yeah, tune into that, y'all, because it's going to be it's going to be off the chains, as as they may say, off the chains. So, with that being the case, appreciate y'all's viewership. Appreciate your support. If you're shopping for drones, drone accessories, cameras, expand this video's description and then click the link there, or simply head on over to EpicDroneShow.com or irixguy.com, and you can find all the links there. Thanks for your viewership, and stay tuned for the next live show. Y'all have a good one.